Today I have a wonderful, wonderful thing that I want to share with you. I had an encounter in heaven that you are going to want to hear about that will change your life forever. Welcome to Nuggets of Gold. My name is Donna Rigney, and today I'm going to share with you wonderful revelation, a beautiful place that the Lord took me to in heaven. One day I was sitting alone in my prayer time, and the Lord came and visited me in the room. And he said, come on, I want to take you someplace. His presence was so strong and so powerful, and I had been interceding for a lot of different people that I loved and that needed prayer. So I, I, I knew his presence was so strong that these prayers would get answered. So he sat in the room and I sat beside him and just poured my heart out to him for all the different people that I was concerned about. Uh, many, many people had asked me for prayer and I was bringing each one before him. And so I bet probably an hour went by and the Lord said, are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> I have something I want to show you. And so uh, I was like, okay, <laughs> I think I got all my prayers prayed. And uh, off we went into the spirit. And as we went into the spirit, we came to the base of a mountain. Now, I had been to many different places in heaven, but never had I seen this mountain before. This mountain was enormous and it was solid gold. Now, from my previous visits to heaven, I knew that Every single thing in heaven, you touch it and the love of God pours out of it. So when I looked at this gold mountain, I'm like, oh boy. I just leaned over, got down on my knees, I put my face right to the, to the gold of the mountain because I wanted to feel all the love that was pouring out of that mountain. And so I did, <laughs> and it was wonderful. And Jesus is coaxing me. He's like, come on, come on, <laughs> gotta move on. And so as we started up the mountain, he handed me a pair of sunglasses. And so I put these sunglasses on because the sun, just the dazzling brightness of this mountain, just the gleam of it was going to be too much for my eyes to hold, he was showing me. So we went up the mountain and as we walked up the mountain, we came to a, a on the side of the mountain was a white picket fence. Now the white picket fence was made of gold, but it was white. And so the Lord said, come on, I'm gonna show you something. So he opened up the gate to the picket fence and in we went. And we went into the most beautiful, beautiful garden on this mountain. A beautiful, everything in this mountain was en enormous in this garden. The garden was just full of beautiful trees, beautiful flowers, but like, on the earth, you know, a flower bud, a big flower bud, you know, flower blossom is, you know, like about that big. Not here, not, not in this beautiful garden on the mountain of glory. They were, the leaves were like that big. The blossoms were that big. They were magnificent. Everything was enormous. Everything was huge. Everything, no matter what I looked at, I was shocked by what I saw because Everything was bigger and more beautiful than I could have imagined. And so the Lord said, come on. And there was a, a garden swing. And the two of us sat down in this garden swing. And there was a beautiful, beautiful apple tree in front of us with beautiful pink blossoms on it. And enormous apples were growing on this apple tree. Something that you would not, if you could just picture in your mind, a beautiful apple tree on the earth but multiplied, magnified. Now I'm watching all this and saying, how can this be? How can this be that these plants and these trees and everything growing here is growing in gold? It just, I, I couldn't fathom in my mind how 
something could grow in gold. And the Lord looked at me, because he always knows what I'm thinking, and he said, don't your plants on the earth grow in dirt? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. He said, well, why can't my plants grow in gold here in heaven? And I, and I began to think gold is probably much more nourishing, especially the gold of God's glory, than the dirt we have here on the earth. And so he invited me, he said, come on, come and sit on the swing. As we sat together on the swing, and as we were sitting together, he began to show me how everything was growing so enormous and big in this garden because they were growing in the glory. They were growing in the glory. And he said, as you spend time with me soaking in my glory, as you spend time with me sitting beside me, just letting my love pour on you, then the good things that's in you, your talents, your gifts, they will grow, be magnified and be multiplied. Just like the plants that are growing here on my garden. They're all growing at enormous spe speed because of the beautiful, beautiful glory that's there. And so I, I began uh, thinking about if I spend more time in the glory, spending time in God's presence, uh, then those areas that are weak in me that I would like to be strengthened, they can be strengthened. They can be made bigger. Uh, he told me, he said, it's not just uh, the talents and the gifts, like the gifts of the Holy Spirit hmm, that we, we have, uh, the gifts of miracles, the gifts of healings, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, supernatural faith, tongues, interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirits, not just those gifts, he said, but the natural talents that my children have, talents to draw, talents to sing, uh, talents of, of helps to help other people, those talents, those gifts that my children have, as they spend time with me, soaking in my presence, soaking in my glory, those gifts and those talents are going to grow too. Everything, everything that soaks in his glory, just like the plants, their roots are going down deep in the glory of God. They're rooted in the glory in this mountain. They were enormous in size. They were beautiful, fruitful, so fruitful. And he said, the same thing will happen to my children. And he was, I know he was talking to me, to my children as they sit and get their roots down deep in me, their love for me so strong and grow so strong and take time to spend with me. In our last uh, show, we talked about the bridge that led into heaven over that beautiful river and the beautiful golden, golden waterfall. That bridge takes us from the natural realm into the spirit realm. So as we go from the natural realm, getting rid of our distractions, setting time aside, every day to be alone with the Lord. This is my time alone, special time with him. As we do that, as we discipline ourselves, make ourselves do, those, do that on a daily basis and sit with him, we will flourish and grow just like the plants on that garden are flourishing and growing. We will be, have gifts that are enormous. Uh, look at the gifts of some of the saints that have gone before us. Uh, Catherine Coleman, what a wonderful gift she had. Smith Wigglesworth, the gift of supernatural faith. When you look at these people that went before us, and you, you stop and think, how did their gifts grow like that? If you look at their lives, they will all say they had a devotion to the Holy Spirit. They spent time daily in the presence of God. They soaked, they marinated in God's glory, in his presence. They didn't let anything else take precedence over their time with God. I remember reading about Smith Wigglesworth that he was at someone's home and he was supposed to be having dinner and he just felt a prompting of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit wanted to meet with him. He left the table, went off into another room and got alone with the Lord. That was this habit of his life. That was what he did. And this is what God is is asking us to do in this hour. Spend some time, good quality time. Huh? We can say, oh, I'll talk to God on the, 
and when I'm in the car on the way to work, <laughs> or while I'm cleaning the house, I'll talk to God and I'll spend some time with him. He wants us to take quality time. But like I saw him in my last video, I, I told you about sitting in the throne room, just waiting, just waiting for me to come and sit beside him and sit and soak in his presence and let his glory fill me. He's saying, this is what I want my children to do in this hour. I want my children to spend time with me so that I can cause what's good in them to grow and flourish and bear fruit. Donna Rigney and her husband Jack have been married for over 53 years and together have raised 23 children, three biological, four adopted, and 16 foster children. Donna is an author, prophetess, and pastor, but is an evangelist at heart. She has brought teams to minister the gospel in prisons, nursing homes, and for over 15 years, she and her husband hold services at a youth detention facility for teenage boys, with thousands receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior, set free and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Donna and Jack also host two weekly services and prayer meetings, where their goal is to help others enter into a deep, intimate relationship with the Lord, to fall in love with Father God, and live filled with the Holy Spirit and unhindered by demonic strongholds. Donna's messages are both timely and prophetic, and she is known for her passion for intimacy with the Holy Spirit. For more tools and information, contact Donna Rigney Ministries. While sitting alone with Jesus on the garden swing in this beautiful, beautiful garden that I was telling you about, he began to speak to me about the significance of him giving me the sunglasses on the way up the mountain. I've learned in the past that everything that happens on our visitations, there's some significance behind it. There's a teaching he wants to give me. And in this, these, this pair of sunglasses was a nugget of gold. A golden nugget was given to me. And I'm going to share that golden nugget with you. Uh, the Lord began to speak to me about how important it is for us to keep our eyes fixed, fixed, huh? On those things, Philippians 4, 8, that are good and pure and lovely. Uh, if we can train ourselves to look at those things in life that are beautiful and that are good. He began to explain to me how frequently when we go through life, we go through many trials. All of us do. None of us are exempt from that. If we live on this earth. We have an enemy and it says he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. And we do go through times where we feel like we're being devoured, where everything in life is going wrong. And he said, during these times, if you could train yourself to get your eyes fixed on me. He reminded me of uh, years before he brought me into hell to show me hell. And he told me as we were going through hell together, keep your eyes fixed on me or you won't be able to bear what you're seeing. The evil he was showing me, he said, you can only bear it if you look at this scene I'm showing you, this part of hell through me. So I would have to look at Jesus and then see through him what I was seeing. He said, in the same way, he reminded me of that. And he said, in the same way, I want you to and do it yourself and encourage my children to keep their eyes fixed on me, no matter what goes on in life. Run to him, run to him. He said, and while you're there, remember those wonderful things that you've seen in the past. And he told me, he said, the things I've taught you and shown you as you've gone through heaven, the beautiful places you've seen, uh, the beautiful wheat fields and the flower gardens, uh, the beautiful uh, ice capped mountains I've seen in heaven. He said, keep your eyes fixed on me and remember, remember those good things things you've seen in the past or the good things I've done for you. Remind yourself of the miracles I've done in your life. Remind yourself of the, the times that you were going through a tough time and I saw you through it and I carried you through it. He said, these are the things that I'm going to ask you to do. If you want to have peace in your heart, you know, it says in scripture, he will keep our minds in perfect peace if we'll keep them fixed and stayed on him. 
And so he was showing me this by the, the sunglasses. And he reminded me of, oh, a few years before, he was, uh, we were talking together, and I was noticing how so many people were pretty evil on the earth. And I was thinking to myself, how does God love all these people? Because he loves everybody. He loves everyone. The worst sinner, he loves them. They are his precious children and he loves everyone. So I'm thinking, how can he love these people? He's God. He knows all their flaws. He knows everything about them. He knows the murders they've committed, uh, the corruption they've been involved in, the people they've hurt. How can he love these people? And he knows my thoughts. <laughs> and so he said to me, I practice what I preach. And I thought, what do you mean you practice what you preach? And he said, this is what I do. And this is the secret to how I love everyone. He said, I think on those things that are good and pure and lovely. Every single person I look at and I see the good in them. I see my son reflected through every single one. I find the patience in them. I find the kindness in them. I find a good deed they did. I find a smile they smiled at somebody. And I focus on that. And that's how I'm able to love everyone. And he said to me, you do the same. And so this is what I feel like he's saying to us today is take the time to look for the good in the situations that we're facing in life. Look around and see the beauty. See the beauty of the birds flying around, the beauty of the flowers. When life is going terrible, find, take a minute and just find something beautiful to focus on. Then think about the wonderful things that God has done for you in your life, where he rescued you, where he helped you, where he rescued one of your loved ones. A wonderful testimony you heard somebody say of what God did. What that does is it encourages us and it builds our faith so that we can get over that hurdle the enemy has thrown across our path that might want, would cause us to really stumble and fall and get into depression and disillusionment and fear. If we're thinking about those things that are good and pure and lovely, keeping our focus on God, looking to him, then when we see that stumbling block, we can just easily step over it, step over it and move forward. And this is what he was showing me. He said, as you go through life, remember these sunglasses, remember what they represent. Keep your eyes fixed on me. Fix your, your attention, not on those things that are troubling you. And I find that for me, when I'm going through a difficult time, that's a, a challenge. And I'm sure that is for all of us, that when we're going through a tough time, all we can think about is that tough time. So what he has guided me to do is play some soft Christian music, uh, go on YouTube and listen to someone who uh, has an uplifting message or positive prophetic word. Uh, get in the Bible. Get alone with the Lord. Sit with him. I picture myself climbing up on his lap like a little child with his father and just sitting there with him and just asking him, what is it that you want to talk to me about today? What do you want to talk to me about? And as he talks to me about whatever he wants to talk to me or show me something beautiful in heaven, you know what happens? All the things I was worried about, they're diminished. It's like they almost disappear. I, I even forgot they were there. And I, after I get through with the visitation, after I get through meditating on a scripture that he leads me to, I try to remind myself of it. When I go back to the situations I'm facing, I try to go and remind myself of what he showed me when we were sitting together. And I think about those things. It's, he, it's, he tells us in scripture, think about, we have to train our minds. Don't let our minds just go this way, that way, whichever way they want to go and think whatever it wants to think. He, he's given us our minds and he wants us to have a little bit of a harness on our thoughts that we don't let ourselves uh, think depressing, fearful, anxious thoughts. If you find yourself thinking uh, negative thoughts about yourself, about other people, critical thoughts about others, do what he does. Look for the good in that person and focus on it. 
thank God for that good quality that that person has. Uh, sometimes we can live with somebody that's difficult. And what God has shown me to teach people to do is even write a list. So when in those difficult moments, you can run to that list and see all the good qualities that God has shown you are in those people. So you can focus on them, get your thoughts on them, and not be thinking about the negative things that were troubling you. Think about the good qualities, the Jesus that's in that person. Uh, there's many, many, many beautiful things in this world that the Lord has created for us. And he said he wants those things to be distractions for us. When we're going through trials, when we're going through difficulties, let those things be the distraction and not the difficult things be a distraction and keep us away from God. The opposite. Let the beautiful things that are going on in life around us, let them, those things distract us away from our problems and our trials. It sounds like it's so difficult to do, but don't forget, he's given each and every one of us Holy Spirit to live inside of us to help us to do this. Donna Rigney had multiple heavenly visitations where she toured heaven and encountered the glory of God. In Donna's powerful book, she shares with you her vivid, detailed accounts of heaven. As you read The Glory of God Revealed, you will be amazed at the wonderful things she saw and learned, and you're too going to encounter the glory of God. Through her book, you will learn how you can access the glory in your life, understand what the glory truly is, learn that you cannot separate the glory from God or from who God is. Find out how the days ahead will be marked by God's glory. Discover how miracles, signs, and wonders will become commonplace in the glory. Understand how to enter into glory encounters with God every day. Don't miss out on getting Donna Rigney's anointed book, The Glory of God Revealed. Go to DonnaRigney.org today and find this book and many more. Well, I'm going to sum everything up for you now. This is the greatest thing that the Lord said in this visitation with me. He said, anybody can come to this garden, the special garden in heaven, the garden of glory, on the mountain of glory, anybody. Not just people that are special, that have special gifts. He said, all of my children are welcome to come and sit with me. Everyone is welcome to sit and soak in my presence, to enjoy my arm wrapped around them. One time the Lord told me, he said, my glory is like a kiss from heaven. When he said, when I pour my glory out, he said, it's me giving my children a hug and a kiss. His glory is a kiss. So we can go and sit with our Father and we can let Him kiss us any time. He doesn't have just a certain amount of kisses He gives to each one. He is love. God is love. And He loves to lavish His children with His signs of affection. He loves to kiss us with kisses that are sweeter than wine. Huh? In the Song of Songs, talks about it. He says, my kisses are sweeter than wine. Let me kiss you. Let me love you. Let me hug you. Let me hold you. And as I hold you, and as I love you, and as I distract you from those things you're troubled about on the earth, as I help you to get your focus fixed on those things that are good and lovely, as I, you sit with me and you soak in my presence the wonderful talents I've given you, the wonderful gifts I've given you, they're going to grow and they're going to flourish and you're going to be very, very fruitful. He pointed to the apple tree, said, see that apple tree? You'll be like that apple tree on the earth, bearing abundant fruit as you sit beside me. Let me hug you. Let me love you. Replace your thoughts about people with my thoughts about them. Let me do that for you and you will be fruitful. You will be happy. You will be you'll be changed from glory to glory. Uh, scripture tells us that as we behold his face, we are changed 
from glory to glory into his image. So the more we sit with him, the more we spend time beside him, he rubs, kind of roughs out, rubs out the rough edges on us, you know, the irritable things that we do, the cranky stuff in us. He rubs those things out and he buffs us up and shines us up. And we are transformed more and more every day into the image of his son, Jesus. We become more and more and more like Jesus. The more we sit with him, the more we focus on him, the more we let him talk to us. A lot of times I'll be sitting with the Lord and I'll be talking and telling him things. But what I've learned, my best prayer times are when I sit and listen. Just sit before him, gaze into his face, let his presence wrap around me and listen. Listen, huh? Scripture tells us, says, listen to what the spirit would say to the bride. Listen. Let our, he gave us two ears and one mouth, huh? He wants us to listen more and speak less. Even when we get apart with him, yes, tell him what's on our heart. Yes, bring all our um, needs before him. But listen to what he wants to tell us. Those things that he says to us, those are the things that change our lives. I'm going to pray for you now that the Holy Spirit who lives in you and who just longs to make you more and more and more like Jesus. That's the job of the Holy Spirit, to make us resemble Jesus. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit has free reign in all of our lives to buff out those rough edges, to bring us into the spirit where we can meet with Jesus, meet with the Father, and where we can be transformed. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that Holy Spirit is given free reign in all of our lives. Holy Spirit, we submit ourselves to you. And we say, Holy Spirit, not my will, not my way, not my way of thinking, not my way of doing things, but your will, your way. I want to do things the way Jesus would do it. I want to react the way Jesus reacts. I want to love the way Jesus loves. I want to follow the Father the way Jesus followed the Father when he was on the earth. Holy Spirit, I can't do it unless you help me. I get distracted so easy. I get angry and upset with people. But I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and that it's not by my own power, not by my own might, not by my own strength, but by you, Holy Spirit, helping me. Help me, Holy Spirit, to get into the word and meditate on the word. Open my ears, Holy Spirit, to hear what you want to say to me every day. Holy Spirit, I ask that you bring me past the distractions onto that bridge of encounter where I can meet with Father and Jesus. I pray this for all of us, all of you, in Jesus' name, amen.